I'm streaming here because I was paying too much attention to chat. Let me make sure we are up and running. Looking good on Twitch. Neat. Let's not... Let's check out the YouTubes. Make sure we're streaming on there, which is, you know, where we'd want to be. We had all those fine folks hanging out. Um, finally got a new review premiered. And I have, of course, all my dogs rushing in saying, oh, it's time. I hear you talking. It's the middle of the afternoon. Why are you talking? That means we get a treat. They've um, somehow figured out the math of uh, if I start randomly talking to seemingly nobody in the middle of the afternoon, it's treat time. Oh, we got uh, uh, Baphomet. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I almost wanted to say um, the name of the um, oh. deity that you summon in all the Final Fantasy games, but that wouldn't be correct. That looks more Sumerian, biblical-y. Uh, let me go ahead and pass out some dog treats, Baphomet, and then we will get to the weed that we like to do. We've got everything set up behind us here. We got a volcano. We got a uh, mini nail. We've got the whole thing. I guess I should move this chat over. Let's go ahead and do the dog treats. They'll get off my back. Which, if any of you were there for our um, live premiere, I think you just saw all three of these fuckers on that live premiere. Take it. Get out of my life. Get out of my face. Go, 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 go. Leave me alone. You're a piece of shit. Right, the dog treats have now and passed out. Exodus, thank you so much. Ah, Baphomet is the happy satanic goat. I thought it was um, something vaguely biblical. I, um, I'm sure I encountered it in that excellent documentary, Hail Satan, the um, one about the um, Satanist church uh, that does all that great work going around and challenging governments over um, religious rights issues. So, let's get straight into the weed here. Baphomet, welcome. Over on great man Vitaly R. Welcome, Vitaly. I'm not sure if we've hung out before or not. Thanks for being here. Um, Vitaly says they are chilling with their cat and smoking. Well, I am chilling with my dogs and about to get smoking. Um, and Baphomet says they're a nice guy. Well, as all um, people from the Church of Satan are. And I mean that very seriously uh it's a great organization um well let's start stop talking about the church of staten staten satan and um over says do you still use the ardent decarb i do still use my ardent decard over um it has now been just at a year since my last usage of it uh because my magical butter maker broke recently uh well a year ago and i haven't used it since then but uh it has been Pretty much exactly a year. It still works great, though. Um, and uh, still recommend it highly, especially if you are really into making edibles. Uh, Baphomet says, I love cats, dogs too, but cats really get me happy. Well, Baphomet, we are um, equal opportunity pet lovers here. Dogs, cats, we love them all. I think very last stream we talked about uh, my beloved cat growing up. Caesar, he's a great guy. Caesar, uh, this first well, we have people to thank or you know give their first bongs to, but we'll we'll give a a, a bong or a mini nail or something to uh, my dead childhood cat. Um, Exodus says you seem like a calm and reasonable person. Are you a calm and reasonable person? Uh, I would like to think so, Exodus. I, um, but I could also just be fooling myself and um, think that I am a calm, rational, reasonable person. But those are also the same thoughts that many people have who are strapped to um, beds and psych wards, believe, too. So, Not that I believe I'm totally through the looking glass uh, in that way, but... It, it certainly wouldn't surprise me. Um, Vitalia says, all dogs are good boys. Yes, they are. Or if you are like my um, 
sister-in-law who, uh, until she was seven or eight years old, believed that um, all cats were girls and all dogs were boys. Um, she's learned better since then. Dogs are creeping around back there. That's two of them. Um, welcome, Captain Fang slash Egg Popo. Let's go ahead and, I, as I keep promising, let's get started with the weed. We're going to kick it off with a nice big dab, and we're going to do it for our friends uh, that I don't think we've uh, met before, not for my dead childhood cat to start with. Baphomet and uh, Vitalia. Oh, and Juan C. Welcome, Juan C. Thanks for being here. Um, let's go ahead and do it this first dab. Go, 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 go. You've had your fun today, buddy. All right, we've got our first dab of the day. We'll do a nice big one, maybe not that big. We don't want to cough to death. Vanilla Kush. Whoops, I lost some of it to the floor. My camera has decided not to follow me, by the way. Hey, yo, camera over here, dog. Camera, I'm over here, dog. What are, what are you doing? Just a second, guys. My, my camera has decided to be a jerk. There we go. We got it. We got our dab. A little bit of it is to the floor. The rest of it is to our new friends hanging out with us, I think, for the first time. Thanks for being here. What an amazing coincidence. And what a terrifying message I just received on my wrist at this very moment. This is bad news, guys. Um, my camera is all <laughs> confused. I just received a message from my wife who sent me a picture who said that at her place of employment, somebody brought in a box, a big old, you know, the the classic cardboard box with a blanket in the bottom filled with kittens. <coughs> Why is she sending me that? Why would she do that to me? She's a lovely person, a great human being, but that seems like a bad, bad, bad thing um, because... The last thing I need is a kitten. The first thing I want, kitten. Look at this bitch over here. She can't handle a kitten. She's too old. She did grow up. She she knows cats though, but she she that's a, that's an old ass dog right there. She can barely <coughs> twelve years old. <coughs> Kittens. <coughs> <laughs> they do look adorable though anyways um where were we we did our first dab i've got another dog here at my waist hi buddy uh where are we going we're gonna get, get caught up on chat it looks like i'm well behind one thank you for the kind words uh vitalia and if I'm saying that incorrectly, please let me know. I'm, I'm, I apologize if I, if so. Says, oh my God, I remember saying, thinking the same thing as a kid. I think that is in regards to my sister-in-law who once believed that 
all cats were girls and all dogs were boys. I love that gender essentialism of that. It's pretty spectacular. But I am now looking here on chat and it looks as if um, that is not an uncommon belief for young people to have had. Um, we are, those, those gender norms are really just baked in right from the beginning. Uh, Baphomet seems to be the same way. He says, when I was a kid, I thought it was the same. Cats equals girls, dogs equal boys. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, it, when you first hear it, it, it sounds, you know, humorous, even laughable, like, oh, kids say the dumb, dumbest things, but drill down for f five minutes and you can easily understand why, uh, they would be conflated that way. I don't know if that would still be the case, though. Uh, I think the internet has flattened um, the sort of gender or the um, more s gender specificity to dogs and cats. That's just a hypothesis. Uh, I, I don't know how you would ever test it, but my guess is you would have less kids today believing that because cats and dogs are now universally beloved by everybody and thus there's less of a reason to make them g gendered in kids programming but maybe i'm totally wrong um <laughs> exodus says i'm fresh out of weed i'm gonna get some resin from the bowl wish me luck in the mining exodus i have been there before Thankfully, not since I moved here to California where the weed flows like wine, which doesn't flow like water, but that's, uh, that's because, you know, we, uh, we run our natural aquifers dry, but, um, the weed does sure flow like wine here until all the grapes dry up. Girl, you're just gonna have to deal. It's, it's, it's okay. Shh, chill. All right, so, um, what are we doing? Uh, I am so high right now. That first dab. Uh, I've done the resin bowls back when I lived in East Tennessee and uh, did not have a regular hookup. Uh, I remember my friend teaching me about it and being very skeptical and weirded out, but if you're desperate and you uh, need some weed, it will work in a pinch, that is for sure. Um... Exodus says, I have no experience with edibles. Got any ideas or recommendations? Uh, well, Exodus, my first recommendation is the same one that you're going to hear from pretty much everybody, which is start small. Um, you can always do more, but you can never do less. So just be careful when you want to do it for the first time. Do way less than you think would be a good dosage. Wait at least 90 minutes before adding more. Um, other than that, you know, uh, whenever you can give it a try, it's it's uh, my preferred way. Go, 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 go. Go, buddy. No, not right now. They are really bothersome today. Um, it says edibles can change your outlook on herb in a great way. Uh, totally agreed. Um, they are revelatory, especially when I first started using them. Um, it changed my whole outlook on weed. And uh, I still do multiple edibles every week. I uh, just concluded a review on Saturday, I believe. Yeah, it was Saturday. I saw, without doubt, the best... Uh, documentary I've seen this year, the second best movie I have seen this year, um, with, I mean, just a holy shit home and run, home run, uh, documentary called Second Chance, but we'll talk about that later, um, if I can remember to, uh, Exodus says, I had a Wonka bar before, and I was sent to Mars and met the Doom guy, well, uh, hopefully, he does what the Doom guy does and rip and tear, but instead, um, you know, welcomed you to a nice, peaceful experience uh, 
less doom and more... I was going to try to think of a piece of media where people live on Mars and it isn't a hellscape and none of them came to me. Are, is there... Is there a piece of media anyone can think of where uh, if Mars is populated, the world, either the novel, the piece of sci-fi isn't dysto- inherently dystopic, or that Mars itself isn't a hellscape in comparison to uh, Earth. It, it seems like Mars is a place to go if you want to make characters suffer. Uh, which is why uh, there are portals to hell on there in Doom. Let's get started with an, our volcano bag. Um, I am spent too much time rambling, and not enough time doing weed, and I'm sure at some point the comments are going to get on me for that, understandably. I realize I don't have my volcano bag in here. I'll be right back. I do. I have it right here. Let's see if I can't get my camera to follow us around again. Excuse me, guys. There we go. Okay, we get our first volcano bag, and I promise I will get caught up on chat. Here we go. Exodus, about his Wonka bar, says they had over 500 milligrams of THC in this tiny piece, no bigger than my pinky. But when I say those two pieces sent me to Mars, my God. You'd be surprised how much THC you can pack in a pretty small little volume. And uh, if you are not used to edibles, uh, well... It's probably easy to imagine how people end up in the hospital um, doing edibles uh, when they are not experienced at edibles or even not experienced with weed. It's uh, if you've ever got that high before, you can imagine the anxiety and the stress that somebody would be going through. And you can, uh, again, it's uh, not too hard to understand why edibles send people to the emergency room briefly uh, until the doctor says uh, you're gonna be fine dude you're just high uh, just just relax uh, so we'll see I'm not sure why I said we'll see I guess we'll see um Baphomet says I'll be back soon gotta play some blitz chess see you in a minute well good luck with your blitz chess Baphomet I'm so curious when you get back to talk chess with you. Not that I'm a chess player, but uh, I love following it. I uh, love talking to people about chess, but uh, and certainly have heard of Blitz before, but never. I don't really know any hardcore chess players. Uh, Exodus says a Total Recall. Well, Exodus, uh, Total Recall, great movie, great book about. Mars, um, but pretty pretty damn dystopic in that one. Uh, in some ways, the quintessential Mars dystopia is Total Recall. Um, Exodus, if I remember correctly, you are a young man. And to just to anybody who's out there in chat right now, if you haven't yet I mean, most, th- this is just going to be a, uh, speaking to the crowd, uh, or speaking to the choir, or, uh, telling people what they've already heard many, many times, or already know to be true, but if you, if you haven't yet, um, you've got to check out all of Paul Verhoeven's movies. That is the Total Recall director, the first Total Recall, uh, not the terrible remake from 2013 when was that uh but uh total recall is just one of uh, paul verhoeven's many many masterpieces of that era total recall showgirls um starship troopers and of course the one of the greatest pieces of satire all time robocop but if you've never experienced 
out there, if you've never done the Paul Verhoeven watch, you must do it. It's, it's as good as any, every, all of your like film snob asshole friends have ever told you it was. Um, it, does anything get better than RoboCop? I don't think so. Um, BBD says, Wheats people will never understand it if they can never actually hear it in one ear, out the other. Well, I hope I'm making myself very clear. Paul Verhoeven is even better than all of the dorks and nerds uh, who have always said, oh, Starship Troopers isn't an action movie, it's a satire. They were right. Uh, and you gotta respect them. And that Paul Verhoeven, there's nothing like him. Even watch Showgirls. Um, I think it, it, it's one of the uh, movies that has a cinema score of an F, which this is a fun detour. Um, by the way, I guess we could go ahead and do this. Uh, there is a very popular metric called cinema score. It's existed for a very long time. It is a polling thing done by, a, I think, an independent company. Um, and they just uh, poll people after mo the movie is over with in the lobby and ask them to rate the movie that they have seen on a, uh, a very American-style grading scale, A to F, and then they sell that data back to the studios. And that one little grade is incredibly important to... Uh, a film's future earnings, its um, ability to sell itself to a streamer, this little cinema score, which again has existed for years and years, like 40 years, um, this A to F done by this one company, super important. Uh, and I think there have only been like 20 something Fs in the history of that scoring. And it is a fascinating, fascinating list. Um, Truly some of my favorite movies of all time are on there. Some real stink, stinky stinkers. I actually just watched one of them on Friday night. Uh, I watched Steven uh, Soderbergh's 2002 George Clooney sci-fi romance, but it's really just straight up cosmic horror Solaris, Solaris, a movie that got an F cinema score, meaning that uh, when these pollsters ask people as they're walking out of the theaters, rate this movie A to F, the great majority of people rated it as a failing grade. Um, directed by Steven Soderbergh, the guy who did the Terrible Oceans movies, and then uh, all of the other movies that he does are incredible and great, like Magic Mike and Logan Lucky and uh, Contagion and Side Effects. Well, he did this very bizarro remake of a 70s sci-fi movie called Solaris, um, Solaris, and people fucking hated it at the time, uh, and it has got an F cinema score. And the movie uh, I watched it on Friday is 100% top to bottom, incredible, like every other Steven Soderbergh movie that isn't an Ocean's 11, 12, or 13, and especially 12 100% total incredible masterpiece. All right, we're super high. Let's do this. I don't know. I know I've done this before on stream, and I'm so sorry, but I want to do it right now. Just have it down. Forever and ever and ever again. And any chance I get to rant about Steven Soderbergh, I'm going to take Steven Soderbergh. We just went over him. Dude who directed Solaris. Amazing, incredible. Once in a generation talent. Uh, but the things that he's directed that made the most money are the Oceans movies, which are all boring. Uh, and Oceans 12 is the second one. Those are the heist movies starring all of your favorite uh, hot cast members. You got your uh, Matt Damon's, you got your Casey Afflecks, you got your George Clooners, you got your uh, Bradley Pitts, you got them all. They're all there. 
Um, and they're stealing shit and they're looking hot and sexy and they're stealing shit and it's cool and it's badass and everybody loves it, but it's actually kind of boring. Ocean's 12 is the, maybe it is, I think the worst movie ever made. Uh, that is the second Ocean's movie. Uh, not only is it just dumb and boring and kind of, uh, uh, just exists to be cool it has the most awful dumb i cannot believe i cannot fucking believe somebody let them go through with this or greenlit this idea or told steven soderbergh hey that sounds like a great idea the sodes soderbergh he loves his gimmicks he uh he, he's a big gimmick guy he uh and, and i love gimmicks too don't get me wrong i love me some gimmicks but he's like the dude who uh, shot an entire movie on an iPhone and released it in thousands of theaters. Side effect. He's the dude who came up with the like uh, um, non-linearly structured mega Hollywood blockbuster in traffic and contagion um, using these big sprawling fractal stories. He like he he, he dude loves his gimmicks. He's retired a bunch, um, but. So he's always like looking to do something different. And in Ocean's Twelve, the worst movie ever made, made by a total genius. Uh, there is a plot line where Julia Roberts is part of the cast. She's Julia Roberts, like you know, but she's—I forget what her name is. She's helping our boys, the Ocean's crew. Um, she's some character, Julia Roberts. She's here. She's like Danny Ocean. She's the main guy's wife or something. I don't know. Who knows? They're, they're ter terrible movies. But the second, the plot of the second movie hinges on the fact that they're going to do this heist somewhere in this big European opera house, dumb something, museum something, beautiful. It's so gorgeous. It's, uh, it's unbelievably beautiful to look at. But... They have to figure out some way to steal whatever the MacGuffin is, the goo -ga that they need to get. And they got to come up with the, the genius plot to pull it off. So what do they do? Somebody realizes that Julia Roberts is going to be at this gala. Now, what, what, what do I mean by that? I mean that Julia Roberts... The actress, the actual human being, is going to be at this gala. Julia Roberts is also a character in this movie that is not Julia Roberts. So their grand idea and ambition is to have Julia Roberts, the, the character who's part of the crew doing the heist, pretend to be Julia Roberts, the actress, because they look so much alike that they're going to use her as like a doppelganger. That's the dumbest, I just, I mean, I can imagine how you could think of that for like one second and then think, oh, that's kind of fun. But think about it for two seconds and you go, oh, wait a second. Does that mean that there's a George Clooney in this world too? Does that mean that there's a Brad Pitt in this world too? Does that mean that interview with the fucking vampire exists in this world and this dude, that these homies are going to be rolling down this, uh, incredibly beautiful opulent european museum and people aren't going to go holy shit it's george clooner's uh, bradley pitt and uh uh, uh matthew damon or, or whatever they're just going to say oh it's three people look like them because in this universe there are those the characters the actual actors exist and they are not the people that we are following that obviously look 100 percent exactly indistinguishably from them just think about it for a second. Just like consider what that would mean if you put, if Julia Roberts existed as an actual human being in a movie where Julia Roberts, the actress, is playing a character, not Julia Roberts. You know, uh, we've seen the, all seen the third Harry Potter movie. You see that version of yourself. Time collapses in on itself. Uh, cats and dogs living together, utter pandemonium. Why would anybody think that, that is a good idea? And why doesn't Danny Ocean, a.k.a. George Clooners, just 
not rob people and become fucking George Clooners. A dude who's a billionaire, by the way. George Clooney's a, bil a billionaire in real life. Hey, Danny Ocean, I got a better idea from you than stealing money. Just kill George Clooners and become him. Ain't nobody going to know the difference, I promise. And then you're a billionaire. Problem's over. Do the same thing with uh, Ma uh, Matty Damon, uh, that Bradley Pitt. Boom. Done. Solved all your problems. It's done. It's over. Why did anybody think this was a good idea? Ocean's 12. It's not bad. All right, let's move on. Okay. Uh, what are we doing here? Um, I'm going to finish this bag and then we'll get to the next. Shambles, welcome everybody. And Katie B, thanks for being here. Sorry about that rant. I, I just had to really lay into Ocean's 12 again. Um, here's a problem though, guys. And I said I wouldn't talk about it too much, but I'm going to real quick. This exact reason, this exact big rant I had about why Ocean's 12 is the dumbest movie ever made is why the sequel to Knives Out is one of the couple of reasons why um not knives out uh what's the, the sequel called glass onion glass onion is very underwhelming um i will say no more but why just if your movie is going to be filled to the brim with celebrities be careful about your celebrity references because very quickly you're going to have to do some weird mental math alright uh, let's get our second volcano bag for our friends Katie B and Shambles coming in right now thank you so much for being here guys and again that rant was a little it was over the top I'm not going to lie Also, sincerely check out the movie Solaris. Uh, if you have HBO Max, it's streaming now. Uh, it's terrifying. Uh, and you get to see George Clooney's butt. All right, a volcano bag at number two. Shamble says, bro, I'm so sad I bought wax and my banger broke in half when I was cleaning it. Shambles, um, I come to you from a place of pure empathy. I I'm also going to guess, Shambles, that everybody here in chat can sympathize and, and empath empathize even with that exact thing. The baking, breaking of the banger, the breaking of the bowl, the breaking of the, the bong, whatever piece of glass, especially after you've gone through the labor of cleaning it, it's one thing to break your piece of glass when it's filthy and you're about to clean it. I need to look at the right camera. I have this one for games and then this other one over here that I'm actually should be talking to. I'm, I don't know why. Oh my God. I do know why I'm so high. Uh, I just finished a review, uh, an edible review, not too long before this, and I hadn't realized how high I still was. Um, and the answer is very. Holy shit. Um, okay. Okay. What were we talking about? Oh, yes. Pressing F and chat, as the kids say, for our buddy Shambles' uh, banger. I have broken... So my mini nail over there, uh, it's it's even more painful. I mean, not to uh, uh, one-up your story at all, Shambles, just as a, a, a mention in solidarity. Because it's this, like, proprietary system, it is a specific little quartz banger you've you have to buy and i have broken two of them um 
one in very similar circumstances. And it's it's always painful. Okay, um, where are we at? We are putting in our second volcano bag, trying to get my dog to move on to other ventures, but that might be asking too much. Uh, Exodus says, anyone here watching Dunes with Patrick Stewart? Exodus, you've got me, um, my friend. Uh, I don't know what Dunes is with Patrick Stewart, and I'm Googling it right now. Okay, that's kind of what I had wondered, Exodus, is if you were referring to Patrick Stewart as... Oh, that was vile, both on my end and through the microphone. I sincerely apologize. Please forgive me. I don't. Um, uh, he played Gurney Halleck in Dune. Dune, 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 Dune. The uh, holy fucking shit. Are we gonna about to get in a second rant? Um, the actual worst director of all time. The 80s Dune done by the... Uh, I'm not going to rant about David Lynch and how all of David Lynch's movies are actually uh, dumb and boring and you shouldn't trust anybody who loves David Lynch, but we're not going to go there. And we're going to say David Lynch's Dune, uh, it's not good. And if Exodus, you, ha if you like, if, if we're referring to Patrick Stewart playing Gurney Halleck in the 80s Dune, I have such spectacularly great news for you, and that is there was a new Dune last year, 2021, and it was the second best movie of last year. Uh, and you don't get Patrick Stewart as Gurney Halleck. No, you don't. But you might get somebody close to as good. And that's Thanos, Josh Brolin. I think, right? Um, Exodus, we've talked uh, a, a lot about Dune here um, on stream. A couple things real quick. Dune, 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 Dune. Um, one of those rare, spectacularly joyful events where you are anticipating something for years and years and years and it 100% lives up to or exceeds your expectations. Huge factor, uh, I mean, unbelievably huge uh, fan of the director, Denny Villa Villeneuve. I mean, how big can I be if I can't pronounce his French Canadian's ass's name? But dude, it did Arrival and uh, Prisoners and Sicario and Enemy and. Blade Runner 2048. That's enough. Uh, he did Dune Part 1 last year, and it is a complete masterpiece. Uh, it shits on Dune from the 80s from very great heights. I mean, titanic great heights. And and you should uh, run, not walk, to HBO Max and stream it today. Uh, it is truly jaw-droppingly incredible. Um... Back to uh, Dunes real quick, Exodus, while we're here. This is, I'm not shitting you, this is, this is a true story. Uh, I read Dune like five years ago now for the first time when I heard uh, home, my homeboy was directing it. I got super excited. I knew it was going to be amazing. So it's like, all right, I should finally read Dune. Sat down to read Dune, uh, the classic sci-fi novel f from the 60s, often considered analogous. Um, Lord of the Rings is to fantasy as Dune is to sci-fi. Uh, I mean, I don't know how consistent that would be, but you, you pretty frequently hear that. So sat down to read Dune, um, and I mean, I read a lot. Uh, I read a lot. My reading comprehension isn't great, admittedly. I'm not a smarter, intelligent person, but I, I do read a lot, and I don't even... I even read a lot of high-concept sci-fi and stuff. Um, 
I had, had never, ever, ever been so hopelessly confused as to what was happening in the opening chapters of a book. It was inexplicable to me. I couldn't make sense of what, why so many fundamental things were the way that they were. It wasn't like a question of, oh, well, I, there's some mysteries in this world and I'll wait for the author to explain them to me. There were things that's like, no, I don't understand how, I don't want to get, well, it's, I guess, kind of fine as Dune. It's like, I don't understand how travel works in this book. Like, how are people getting across vast distances of empty space with the things you've explained to us? None of this makes sense. Why are there no fucking computers? How, how are there no fucking, why, why are there no computers in this world? How does that, what is going on here? Um, so I eventually gave in. And this is, I've, I don't think I've ever done this before. And I just read a, I Googled like, what do I need to know about Dune? And found a excellent, exactly the same kind of thing I was having. Hey, so you started Dune, you don't know what the fuck is going on. Here's some backstory that will help you figure out or get some footing in this universe. And I read that and it was a like a cipher that unlocked uh, the... Uh, what's the next thing you do in a cipher? Something, the key was good and all of the stuff that was indecipherable before was now ci cipherable, I guess is the verb. Anyways, it made a total sense. And if you read or watch Dune, because uh, I'm not sure if to the movie's credit or not, I loved it, but I knew all of this already, so it didn't, it was no skin off my back, I was prepared for this to go the way it was, but if you didn't know any of this stuff, if you didn't know all the stuff that I had read from this, like, probably 5,000 word summary, I would have been hopelessly lost in the movie and would not have had as good of a time, but the movie does not bother to do the same thing as the book or the 80s Dune in setting up what is happening in this world. And my advice to anybody with Dune, and I sincerely, truly mean this, is before you watch the new movie or read the book, just Google, like, what happens in the Dune world before Dune? Or what do I need to know before I read Dune? Something like that. There will be plenty of people out there to answer those questions, and it will make your reading experience infinitely more enjoyable and also um, uh, not, not only will it like you actually be able to enjoy what you're doing here, but it doesn't spoil any, it's not like none of the things that you learn about Dune uh, from its past are things that are that you would learn from context clues in the first book uh, it, it's just not bothered to be explained and, and maybe set up later in many of the apparently uh, not nearly as good follow-ups. So I'll do a couple for you real quick. There's a big one. Just a huge, huge, huge one. If you're, if you're a Dune guy, if you're watching Dune, and you want to know, like, why everything is so weird, I'm going to help you out right now. Uh, and I do think it helps tremendously. If you're wondering, hey, why are there no computers? Hey, how are people traveling around, moving around space? Wh wh why, are, why are we not talking on the internet? Why don't people have guns? Are we fighting with knives, but we have ships that can go deep space? Well, the biggest and most all-encompassing answer was that... Dune is a far, far future novel in the far, far future uh, or sometime in the past, closer to where we are. There was a, a good old-fashioned Terminator Skynet-style battle between humans and AI. Humans narrowly won 
that battle between humans and artificial intelligence. But as a consequence, humans banned the use of artificial intelligence and even computational um, devices, um, so computers of any type, uh, so as AI could never get a foothold again. So in the world of Dune, where they have interstellar travel, nobody can use computers. That seems impossible. How do they get around for that? Well, Vitalia has got it exactly right. You become the computer. Now, I won't spoil what they do to become the computer, but they have man computers in uh, the Dune world. The Mentats, which you may have seen in the movie, read a, or seen huge parts in the book, they're man computers. They are uh, addicted to the drug that undergirds all of the uh, economy of the world of Arrakis slash Dune slash the whole empire. Um, and uh, they, human computers get addicted to that substance and that substance called spice allows you to do unfold your brain and do ungodly calculations and shit while high on it and if you do enough of it over the course of a life you can become a mentat and basically you can do the calculations required to fold time and space or actually are those the people maybe i'm conflating a little bit i think they're like computers on the ships as well but they're also mentats uh human computers that do drugs enough to they can do it because you can't have actual transistors uh, and logic boards doing things because they worried about the alien overlords. So now you know why in the world of Dune there are no computers and why people do a bunch of drugs. I hope it helps. Exodus says it also turns your irises blue if you do enough of it. Yes, that's true. Ask all the Fremen uh, on Arrakis. Um, Dune, it's great. Uh, the movie is better than the book. That is also true about the uh, Lord of the Rings. Come at me. <laughs> I've read them both. I can, I can, I can say that. I've only read the first Dune. Um, I, I've heard they get worse and worse and worse and worse from there. Uh, all right. We we've talked Dune. We've talked. Um, too much shit. I have not done enough weed. Well, maybe I'm doing too much, actually. What we're going to do next is we are going to chill it out a little bit. Slow it down. <laughs> Mind our rants. Then we'll go do a very, 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 very um, unwise second follow-up dab. Not nearly as big. I don't know why we're doing this. And then we'll play a little Splatoon. Because I'm going to be too high for practically anything else. Uh, and as you can see, uh, with, <coughs> without some kind of structure uh, at this moment, <coughs> the rants are just going to get more esoteric, uh, less comprehensible, uh, and, and maybe more uh, profane. So instead, we'll, we'll just uh, shoot people with some ink, and maybe that'll be better. <laughs> Exodus says, uh, ran about Lord of the Rings. I want to hear this. Well, Exodus... I'm happy to say it's not much of a rant. I'm going to go do this uh, dab real quick. Uh, 
Because I don't, there's no part of Lord of the Rings that's hate for me. Oh my god, I've been here long enough, my switch turned itself off. Okay, damn time. Get us with my switch, excuse me. Camera, you're with me. There we go. Okay. We've got our dad. Here we are. Thanks for waiting. We're going to play a little bit of Splatoon of this. My dogs are still all upset. And then we're going to talk, uh, somebody excess want to talk about Lord of the Rings. Not much of a rant, just that the movies are better than the books. Sorry. Oh, sexfine.info. Welcome, sexfine. It's been a while since we've had a, a nice uh, robo troll in here. Don't go throwing your toys around at me. Shame on you, dog. Shame on you. I'll stare you down. <laughs> she always wins. Um, X says the movies are indeed better than the books. Exodus, as always, person of impeccable taste, incredible taste. Let me be the first to say, not that the books are bad, boring, uh, inconsequential, or should be um, shoved to the dustbin of history. No, they're wonderful. They're great. And they um, both have their place. Um, I prefer the ones without Tom Bambadil, though. Always will. Uh, what Peter Jackson did oh so many years ago was still still a miracle to this day. Um, and uh, they are uh, total masterpieces that take um, the found foundational texts of uh, fantasy literature and turn them uh, into even more profound and moving movies using um, cinematic technology that uh, in many other contexts has aged real bad, but uh, somehow in Lord of the Rings uh, still holds up uh, visually quite well too. That's my only opinion. They're both great. Um, if you have the patience for them, both try them. And I will, just to uh, back up my claims a little bit, not that this is the best evidence, I read the books before I saw the movies. Wasn't much before, but it wasn't like that was my first impression. I uh, saw the trailer, which was, I think, at the time, the coolest thing I'd ever seen in my entire life. I'd only heard of the books, and I knew that the... I'd read The Hobbit when I was younger and thought it was okay. It wasn't like... It was neat, but it wasn't the greatest thing I had ever read. Um, but I knew that there was this Lord of the Rings thing that was supposed to be way cooler, but I, I didn't really know much about it, to be honest. Saw the trailer, uh, my, right before my freshman year of high school, and I thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. Three movies in a row, one after the other, all these books, all done. I thought it was the, 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 mu the music, uh, they were walking up mountains, they're tall guys, they're short guys, hairy feet, rings. It was amazing. I was like, I'm going to have to read those books now. And then I did. And then I was like, wow, nothing's ever going to be better than these books. This is the most amazing thing ever. And then I saw the movie like a month later. I was like, oh, never mind. 
Movie's better. It ain't got Tom Bombadil. All right. That's enough uh, Lord of the Rings talk. I could always talk Lord of the Rings. Not really. I'm not, I'm not one of those guys. I'm really not. I'm really, really not. Uh, I mean, I'm really not one. I've only made it 20 pages into the Cimmerillion like twice. And that's enough for me forever. That's, I'm good with that. Uh, if I want to read genealogies, I would read the appendices in uh, the Song of Ice and Fire. Thank you. But not really there either, because why would you? Oh, Exodus says, The Lord of the Rings are great and all, but what about the Hobbit movies? Exodus. You have to go and ruin everything, don't you? Um, they are even worse than their reputation um, suggests. Uh, I hope to God there is no future where they get sort of reclaimed in the same way that the prequel Star Wars trilogy is now being sort of reinterpreted. Uh, it is Peter Jackson run amok. I cannot believe how disappointing they are. They break my heart. They're very bad, misguided, and just um, tragic. I really hope somebody at some point uh, let's Warner Brothers take the 9,000 hours of The Hobbit and cut it down to like a two-hour movie. And I bet there is a great two-hour movie in that nine-hour morass of fucking dopey uh, he, dwarves that sometimes look like people and sometimes look like dwarves. Why do some of them look like people? But then other times they just look like Big old bulbous nosed dwarves, and but then other times they look just like humans but small. Why? Not that that's the first question to ask about the Hobbit prequels. Um, I, I am, however, still a Peter Jackson fan, and I know he can still, he has still got great stuff in the tank. Uh, his Incredible World War One documentary using colorized, stabilized footage. What was the name of it? Was just incredible, incredible, incredible from like 2020. If you haven't seen that, check that out. And uh, last thing before we play a little bit of Splatoon. Seriously, I will go to my grave. I get a lot of controversial movie opinions. A lot, a lot of them. But uh, I will probably always stand alone at Peter Jackson's King Kong is the best King Kong, including the original, and one of the greatest blockbuster spectacle movies ever made. Um, a, a As good as Lord of the Rings, uh, Peter Jackson's King Kong. Um, uh, seriously, I not being facetious. Great movie. If you've never seen it, check out PJ's KK. And then, after you finished it, be sure to get your Xbox 360 out of your closet to play Peter Jackson's King Kong, the official game of the movie, an Xbox 360 launch title with that as its actual name. I, I'm, that was the name of the game. Peter Jackson's King Kong, the official game of the movie. It was pretty good, too. Interesting game. Um, long forgotten, but uh, not bad. Uh, what are we doing here? I'm playing Splatoon. I am in game. I need to do some other things here. Switch my cameras around. There we go. Uh, and there we go. I think I'm in Splatoon. I'm here. Whew. Exodus says he's not a book guy, but he's heavily recommended the recommends the Andy Smithson books. They're a wonderful series. I have not heard of that. I will have to check that out, Exodus. 
uh, you seem to be, as we always, you know, talking about here. You've, uh, you've got great taste and stuff, man. Uh, Exodus says, how about Godzilla Smash 2 on the 360? Was there a, a Godzilla game? Because if so, I'm sad I missed it. Uh, I'm sure there must have been some. Uh, Long-time Godzilla fan. I went and saw Godzilla, the original Gojira, the Japanese version, uh, for its 68th anniversary uh, last month. It was incredible. I'd never actually seen it before. Nixie, welcome, Nixie. It's been quite some time since we've had a chance to play. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a room right now. If you are interested in joining, please feel free. Um, while that is happening, oh my god, I keep forgetting to mention, guys, I do have the Discord up. Nixie's here. Thank you, Nixie. Uh, Nixie, before I get started, I'm going to do one thing here. Just so that way I'm not irresponsible. I'll get it started, then I'll hit ready. But I don't want to have to do both and cost us five seconds of playtime. Uh, Godzilla on the Xbox 360. Never played it, but I'm sure I would love it. Um, here's a deep, 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 super amazing deep cut for you. I'll, I'll just give you a random in the middle of the wheat stream at cherry on top. The greatest Sony first slash second party uh, game of all time to never get a sequel, a uh, PlayStation 2 masterpiece. I mean, this game is incredible. The fact that it never got a follow-up is criminal. Uh, was it Incognito? Who is the developer? Uh, maybe the people who did Twisted Metal? Anyways, the game was called War of the Monsters. It was on PlayStation 2, a Sony published game where it was a 3D fighting game, um, up to four players, where you are in a city. Much like um, there were a lot of uh, Super Nintendo games, I can't remember the name of them now. They were very similar, but they were uh, on a 2D plane, um, where you play basically kaiju, destroying a city and fighting each other. Uh, but this game, War of the Monsters on the PlayStation 2, was that, but in 3D. Uh, and it was the most delightful thing ever. Uh, it's the greatest Godzilla game of all time without Godzilla actually being in it. Godzilla, you know, in that there's a giant lizard character that breathes radioactive death. I'm sh I think it's on, uh, well, you can buy it through PlayStation Classics or something, uh, if you've got a PS, uh, one of them PS5s, or maybe even one of them, uh, PS Quattros, any of them PSs, I bet you would do it. You like, uh, monsters beating the poo-poo out of each other? War of the Monsters. An old PS2 classic. Sony, shame on you for never giving us a sequel. All we got from that era was a couple of shitty God of War games of the past couple of years. And they're garbage. Uh oh. Wrecked from behind by Pancake You. Which is exactly what he did. Oh boy. Super rough start for us here. Sorry, Nixie. Gotta get my bearings here.
Woof! Pancake you, the sizzling angel. Boy, are they not. Well, at least I splatted one person before the end of the game. Not going to make any kind of a difference, but we'll call it a moral victory. All right, Nixie, I'm sorry about that. That was a that was a rough first round, but I'm coming in refreshed. I've been doing a lot of ranting about movies and Tom Bambadil and uh, all kinds of garbage. I'm, I'm scrubbing that all the way from the brain, and I'm purely focused on Splatoon at this point. Expect better from me. It'd be hard to expect worse. Okay, uh... Oh, we've got an egg! The incredible edible egg! Thanks so much, Nixie and Egg, for joining. This is exciting. I, I uh, predict good things here. Laser focused, as promised. Too focused. I'm trying, trying not to talk so much. Looking good, but that's just an observation and not a predictor of any kind of specific outcome. That's a lot of blue guys right there. I 
now there's a s even more blue. Well, it was a good game for a long time. It was a very good game for a long time. Well, this is the one I I said that I you know the first game was the one I needed to get through to get at the jitters out, uh, shake the rust off, but I always really meant the third one. This is the one where. Uh, I'm all polished up, uh, all of the, sh you know, dumb stuff we were talking about completely swept out of the mind, and all I'm thinking is ink, and also, I guess, weed, too, because that's also part of this stuff, but uh, mostly just about Splatoon. Holy shit, excellent game, but both Nixie and Egg, we came so close, we were, you know, in uh, control, a good percentage there, and then it uh, fell apart as it likes to do there at the last 30 seconds or so, but... Oh, shit! Oh, my God, I just let that lapse in a night. And I could probably join you guys. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, guys. I... Psst. Please forgive me. And please join me. Uh... Nixie says that they might take a small break after this round, but I'm going to go uh, join back, though. Got three new Amiibos and going to check their progress. Ah, Nixie, did you get the um, new series Amiibo for Splatoon 3, uh, which I've seen on Amazon there tempting me, um, looking real cool. And I'm sorry I just let it neglect and not go to the next round. I'm super high, guys. Uh, if you'd like to join me, I'd love love for you uh, to play some more with us. Even though I know, Nixie, you said you're taking a break. Um, this might be a not bad opportunity, understandably. Um, while that is happening, I think you guys are probably already in a game. That's cool. Great opportunity for me to get another bag going. Not that I need it. And I think I've shown this while I'm waiting. I have had, uh, back here, I, uh, I have the only amiibo I have, uh, outside of, uh, Zelda, which I had to buy with my Switch. When I bought it at GameStop at launch, because I didn't pre-order ahead of time, they had like bundles and you had to like, you wanted to get it on day one, you had to buy a bunch of extra stuff. And so that's how I ended up with a Zelda Amiibo, I think. But I'm, I've never even had a Wii U. Uh, actually, not sure. I very briefly had a Wii U on my possession, um, but n not for very long. And these were Wii U Amiibo. And I saw them on clearance somewhere in the year 2015 for like $2. And I was like, oh, I don't know why. Because I, it, we live in a consumer's culture. I'll buy these. And for whatever reason, they followed me around for a long time. And they're still in their very torn up packaging. I got the girl, and I got the homie. Neat. Uh, they, I forgot I had them for a, a very long time, including up until very recently. Uh, they were sitting in a box in a garage, and I was playing a bunch of Splatoon, and my wife was like, don't you have some of those toys sitting in a box somewhere? And I said, I think you're right. And then three weeks later, I finally grabbed them. And then two weeks after that, I finally remembered to show them. And then that is now the end of the story. Peter S. says, I'm high. What are we talking about? Peter, I'm very high. 
I'm talking about it, and I still can't really answer that question, to be honest, Peter. I think we're talking about the history of Nintendo, my failure to properly um, maintain a lobby for people to play Splatoon in, um, how high I am, uh, what else have we been talking about? Um, there's a big long rant about Soderbergh, Steven Soderbergh, uh, for a while. I think there was, there was, there's been a bunch of stuff. Uh, you have to, you have to check the cliff notes, but Peter, point is, I'm glad you're here. Peter, Peter, Nickel Eater. Thanks for being here. I think at the moment, we're about to launch into some more Splatoon. I should go ahead and switch back here. Um, and uh, I think we're just hopefully waiting for a couple of friends to join us. Because I made a boo-boo before. Peter, what brings you here? Um, and what are you smoking on? Egg with the excellent question, which is, isn't a good, uh, isn't this a good time to try out your Discord? It would be a perfect, perfect, perfect time, um, and I promise we will do it tomorrow for sure. But actually, I just found out I have just uh, about thirty minutes or so, give or take, to stream. Um. And you can see the state, uh, how high I'm in already, and it could go even worse. So, um, I promise you, Egg, I will be on Discord tomorrow. I'll even post what time I'm going to be streaming tomorrow on Discord. And if you want to hop in, uh, well, I'm not sure if you'll be online, but it'll be earlier than today, too. I know that. Anyways, I'm going to hit ready, because I think Nixie's enjoying her amiibo out there. Um, and we also have some uh, a bit of a countdown here. So, Egg, we will get on Discord tomorrow, hopefully if you're around, and I would love to voice chat with you then. Uh, I do have it all set up, and also, also, Egg, thank you for the reminder. Let me go ahead and put that Discord invite out there. I do have a Discord server that I would love for people to join and uh, help me make something of, do something with, if you're interested in joining. I hope that link is still active. If not, let me know. I'll generate a new one. It is brand new. Um, but uh, would love for anybody to join and um, come and hang out. I've already posted one picture uh, that you won't find anywhere else on the internet. And I promise you it is quality content. Well, thanks, Nixie. I super appreciate it. Hope you're enjoying those amiibo. Try to watch his Sphinx. Don't 
Don't ever uh, go straight to the blob blobber's face like that. They'll uh, one throw of that toilet will end it like it did me there. And I should, of course, know better as a uh, person who proclaims to like to lob blobs. I would, I should know not to uh, get directly in the line of fire of those bubbles. Well, I didn't splat anybody, but at least it looks like the people got off the top of the middle there. Took another big old lob of blobs right to the face. It is very close. Seven seconds to go. Taking a risk by sneaking out to their side. No idea how it's going to end up, but I got my fingers crossed. Nixie says that um, the Inkling Boy and Girl work for Switch and that they uh, you get gear for it. Yes, I didn't. I actually knew that. Um... You get like the, you can still use them to today and you get whatever the little gear is at the back. Here's the, here's the problem, Nixie. My wife and I both play Splatoon and we still haven't decided which one of us wants which piece of gear. I think we have the samurai and the schoolgirl and uh, we're both being too kind and saying oh you get to choose but i think we both we both want to be the samurai uh so neither of us has picked anything yet did i screw up again oh my god egg egg why do you ever why are you friends with me egg i messed this up 100 percent of the time nixie says you guys get both that's right we can both just use the same amiibo why would i even Nixie, why don't I talk to you more often? Um, you are filled with such great advice. Egg, I fucked up. I'm sorry, my bad. Uh, again, why not a bad idea that I, uh, bad thing that I have to get off in a little bit. It's very high. Um, uh, Baphomet says he's got to go get some proper smoke. Enjoy the dream stream. Baphomet, thank you so much for hanging out with us. It's been a blast getting high with you, playing Splatoon, talking movies, uh, talking the goat uh, icon of the uh, satanic church. It's all great. Thanks for being here. Enjoy the proper smoke. Egg, I'm hoping you will, once your game finishes, you will forgive me again and uh, come join us. But maybe what I need to do is uh, Nixie really wants to see these amiibo get open. I'm I'm fine to do it. Let's we we uh, this is a uh, egg. I'm gonna back out for a second because I've already messed this up. And I'm so sorry, but um, let's unbox some Amiibo. This is a genre of video we've never done here before on Wheats. Uh, an unboxing. But uh, the kids love them. So let's do that. Uh, this is our path to uh, YouTube stardom right here, right now. Unboxing of classic toys. Uh... As they say in the entertainment slash startup world, we're pivoting. No more weed. It's all about toy unboxings. What do I do here? I press this button. Yes. Here we go. Um, here's our amiibo. 
This is the Inkling Girl. Uh, and Nintendo always likes to have their trilingual. Um, and curiously, the third language is always French, and it's always, almost, I think, always listed above Spanish, um, which I've always found interesting. I, I, they might have some office in Quebec or something, which would be why it would be the case. But uh, everything you get from Nintendo, trilingual. Um, also, uh, I don't, I've never really watched unboxing videos, so I don't know what people say. Look at that cardboard. Um, okay, so we've got our Amiibo. This is exciting. I'm not going to lie. I, I can see. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's do this. Well, I know you can go lower, you son of a bee. There we go. Oh, well, that's too low. Uh-oh. We saw things we shouldn't have seen. Okay. Uh, here's our Amiibo. Lots of plastic. I guess this is kind of what I do on YouTube. I open boxes clumsily and then try to say things for a few minutes. And there it is. It's a girl. Now, I forget how we do... The well, I've never actually done it, so I can't say I forget. Where we go to make all the Amiibo dreams happen. Uh, do we go to Equip? I've seen something that says Amiibo. Freshest Fits? You go to the square. Thank you, Nixie. My very own... Uh... Uh... Way better than Google, Google. Um, so we go to the square. And there will be a box around the plaza, and you do it there. And that rhymed, too, which uh, is even better. You go to the square, go around the plaza, and do it there. Oh, like this big amiibo box. That would make sense. Well, here we go. We've got an NFC. Let's put it on the touch point. Uh, oh my god, this is... Free to me? Don't I already have one? Oh, poop. This dude looks exactly like me. P. Wouldn't I already have a me? Uh-oh. Let's try this again. Oh, no. Oh, wait, it wasn't on the screen. Here we go. This is exciting. Oh, you guys aren't, I'm not even showing you this right screen. My bad. Oh crap, oh crap. Fool. Oh my god. We got new shoes. 
And we can save our gear to our amiibo. Holy crap. Well, we did it. Nixie says, the more matches you do, the more progress you make to get the full set. Ah. Huh. Do I have to do anything uh, other than... Do I have to, like, equip the shoes to start? And you know what, Nixie, this is... I'm going to be a, a, a bit of a... Uh, an, a jerk tease and say the next stream will do the boy amiibo you have to come back for that one uh, we're doing the girl today um, you know I've got to if I'm going to pivot to uh, unboxing videos I'm going to have to start doing clickbaity things like saying and next time we'll get to the uh, the boy the boy amiibo I guess and also because uh, I uh oh egg popo uh match ah uh eggs is the you only have to get 10 wins and 20 wins for the rest of the amiibo gear well thank you so much for the information the two of you i super super joy appreciate it and i'm gonna make ourselves a room for our last stretch of games here Nixie's back. And I will get our final last volcano bags as well. Dope! I thought I screwed up again. We're good. Thank you so much for your patience, Egg and Nixie. And Nixie, also thank you for the Amiibo tutorial. It was kind of fun doing that live. And uh, not that it shows up with my like AI blocking software, but uh, that's a pretty dope little uh, figurine there. It's got uh, more detail than I would have thought. Uh, which is maybe the uh, nerdiest thing I've ever said, talking about figurine quality. I promised myself I would never get to this point, but here I am with uh, manga on my shelf behind me and me admiring the uh, detail on a figurine. I've, uh, uh, something's something's gone very very wrong for my life plan somewhere but you know what it's kind of a blast right but that's enough uh, talking about uh, figuring quality and uh, anime collections and now it's time for purely Splatoon focus streaming Barely got Omen. And taken out by Yeehaw. Ah, the guy who was pinning me down earlier with that tri streamer.
Gotta watch out. I think they have a wave break. Yep, see that green line of death coming out my way. It's just an avoid. That was nice. Ooh. Just trying to run. Barely, barely survived that. Well, Jake, thank you for subscribing. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. Barely, somehow, kind of, technically, still alive for the moment. And there we go. Uh-oh, it is uh, coming down to it. Five seconds to go. We still have the lead. But I can imagine it slipping away. Nixie says, should I be support or not? Up to you, Nixie. I'm hopefully that wasn't uh because I wasn't doing something I wasn't supposed to, which not infrequent, but uh Uh I just recently played some of the rank stuff on Friday and played some of the other modes where the support type class stuff makes a lot more sense than it does in normal turf battle. Uh, it would make way more sense why you would want, like, the, uh, um, you know what I'm talking about. All of the weapons that only benefit, uh, teammates, and, uh, it makes way more sense when you're doing objectives that isn't just getting the most territory possible. Oh, well, that kicked us out of our room anyways because of Nintendo's weird, um, map rotation thing not that that should mean that you get ejected but egg and nixie i hope you'll join me for uh a few actually i think just a couple of final games there's nixie and while we're fingers crossed i think that's egg i'm gonna swap over to the sploosh for our final couple of games here Ready to up. Nixie, all that was to say, please play whatever is uh, most fun for you to play. And uh, no need to concern yourself with uh, what, what may or may not benefit. Just, uh, what, what am I trying to say? Um, thank you right, for, uh, offering, but I, uh, have fun. I, I don't know why I'm being so pushy. Uh, I'm very high right now, guys. Um, and I'm going to use all that energy to get us a nice victory here again on Splatoon. I think you won that last one. Forgot to check, actually. Nixie, what I meant to say is, I think always play what you love and not what you think will benefit others because, uh, you know, you probably play better playing what you enjoy anyways if it's something that you find genuinely engaging. But uh, that may not be true. Blob to the face! Although, of course, on games where team composition matters... Oh, shit! matters a whole lot that would be terrible advice but 
Games with newbies, I, uh, I wonder how much it matters, a, uh, a well-thought-out composition. Freighted with old star fruit. Very, very close game here. Got a hammer and not a crab tank this time. Got to remember that. Keep that in mind. They're very different weapons of death. Okay. That last splat of left stick just felt unnecessary. Dr. SJ, welcome. Good to see you. And Sneeps, good to see you both. I feel bad saying that this is actually my last game coming up to you guys both. But I'm so glad that we got to say hello and goodbye at the same time. Got one more game before I'm bouncing. Sneeps says, hey, Weed, how's it going? It's going great. Even better knowing that you and Dr. Smegma Jones are here. And Dr. SJ, hope you're feeling better, my friend. Uh, hope you got through whatever awful stuff it was and your Thanksgiving was, uh, that weekend was still enjoyable. He says, oh, he answers when he says, when I got sick around Thanksgiving, I didn't smoke, but even after fully recovering, I still don't have the craving to be high. I only smoked three times in the past three weeks and I use my pen all day and night. It's almost like that tail moth made me realize I can't be hitting my pen all day. I did get super high when I did smoke, though. Like, way higher than before. All of that makes sense, and I'm super uh, encouraged to hear that you had some revelations, Dr. SJ. Well, encouraged might be, isn't the right choice of words, because there was nothing wrong with the way it was before, but even though I do a thing about weed um, edibles and vape cartridges i always always encourage people to take breaks long-term breaks short-term breaks whatever they need to do um and you know take breaks and even reassess whether weed is still for them not judging obviously anybody who does weed as somebody like myself is but it's always good to um reevaluate all kinds of decisions and sometimes those decisions are forced upon us we have to reevaluate, like in the case of you getting sick, um, Dr. SJ. But uh, those moments, um, there can be serendipitous things like thinking, ah, maybe I don't need to do as much weed as I did before. Uh, and uh, that is a perfectly great conclusion to come to uh, Dr. SJ. I mean, I hope uh, everything in your life is as fulfilling as it was before um and that it's not a lack of enjoyment period but that you just find weed doesn't provide you the same level of i guess uh well i was gonna say dopamine hit but i don't want to even speculate there what you know, mechanism may make weed enjoyable. I mean, we we know what parts of the brain it obviously affects, but dopamine would also imply. Anyway, so well, did we get a communication error? That's gonna have to be it for me then, guys. I'm not sure what happened there. Holy crap. 
Um, I am so high right now. I am so sorry. Dr. SJ, I'm so happy for you. I hope uh, you are doing way better um, physically uh, in addition to mentally. Uh, it seems like you're doing better. I'm glad to hear it. And I hope uh, you continue to do well. And I hope your less uh, cannabis-filled life is... Uh, as engaging and fun-filled as it was with weed. Um, sincerely. He says, nothing wrong with it at all, but I just needed that break, I think. I still do enjoy the weed. It was my first tolerance break in the past four years. A forced tolerance break is a tolerance brunt break nonetheless, Dr. SJ. And I'm glad it gave you the opportunity to reevaluate some things. And I'm glad, Dr. SJ, you took the time to come say hello with us uh but unfortunately it is time for me to say goodbye nixie egg i'm sorry i really don't even remember what happened uh, i thought we were moving on but maybe we got a communication error it is time for me to go i will be back tomorrow it's been so much fun hanging out with you guys new friends old friends we'll see you again real soon